today we'll look at variation of two interrelated quantities. If one changes, how does the other change? Now, it is an important standalone topic, but along with ratios, it's extremely important and gets used in time speed distance and work rate as well. So take it a little seriously and let's jump in. In this topic, we'll look at direct variation, inverse variation, and joint variation. Let's start with direct variation. So x varies directly with y. This means that when x increases, y increases proportionally. And when x decreases, y decreases proportionally. So for example, if x is 2 and y is 7, when x becomes 4, y becomes 14. So when x becomes double, y also becomes double. Now, when x decreases, let's say it becomes 2 by 3, it has become one third, then y will also decrease and it will become 7 by 3. So essentially, this is the same as saying that the ratio of x by y stays the same. 2 by 7 is 4 by 14. It is equal to 2 by 3 upon 7 by 3 is equal to k. That is that this ratio remains a constant for all instances of x and y. We can represent this as x by y is equal to k or if we are given multiple instances, we can put the ratio equal x, x1 by y1 is equal to x2 by y2 and so on. Let's take an example x varies directly with y. If x triples in value, what happens to the value of y? This is simple enough, straightforward. If x triples in value, then y will also triple in value because x varies directly with y, right? So we, we'll just say that y becomes three times. It also triples in value. All right. So here we were given that x varies directly with y, but quite often we will not be given specifically this statement. We'll need to figure it out. Okay, example two will show us that. If the ratio of the volumes of two right circular cylinders is given by 49 is to 25, what is the ratio of their radii? They both have the same height. So what is the volume of a cylinder? It is equal to pi r square h. Now we are given that the heights of both the cylinders are the same. So then that means v upon r square is equal to pi h, where pi we know is a constant and h is also a constant because it is same for both the cylinders. This means that v upon r square is equal to k. It is a constant. So then we can say that v1 upon r1 square is equal to v2 upon r2 square, the two instances. Right. So here we have figured out that volume uh, varies directly with R square. OK, now we can also rewrite this as V1 upon V2 is equal to R1 square upon R2 square. We are given that V1 upon V2 is equal to 49 upon 25 which means R1 square upon R2 square is equal to 49 upon 25, which gives us R1 upon R2 is equal to 7 by 5. So this will be the ratio of the radii of the two cylinders. Let's start with inverse variation now. So as you might have guessed, inverse variation is the inverse of direct variation. X varies inversely with Y. So when x increases, y decreases proportionally. And when x decreases, y increases proportionally. You know, taking the same example as before, let's say if x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 7. If x doubles in value and becomes 4, then y must become half in value, right? When x increases, y decreases. If x decreases, let's say if x becomes 1, then y will increase and it will become 14. Now, let's say if x decreases and becomes 2 third of its current value, let's say 2, it becomes 2 into 2 by 3, that is equal to 4 by 3. 
then y will become 3 by 2 of its current value, 7 into 3 by 2, which is equal to 21 by 2. I hope this fraction is intuitive as well, right? So when I'm multiplying 2 with 2 by 3, essentially, what am I doing? I'm dividing 2 by 3 by 2, which is I'm dividing 2 by 1.5. So I will here multiply 7 with 1.5, which is 3 by 2. So essentially the fraction just reverses, it just inverses, right? This is 2 by 3 and it becomes 3 by 2, isn't it, right? So this is your inverse variation. What is happening over here? Here the product of x, y stays a constant. Look, so 2 into 7 is equal to 14. Here, 1 into 14 is equal to 14. Then 4 by 3 into 21 by 2 is equal to 14. So essentially, the product is staying the same. So we can write it as x1, y1 is equal to x2, y2 is equal to x3, y3 is equal to k. So these are the various instances of x and y. Right? Okay. Uh, let's look at an example x varies inversely with y. If x triples in value, what happens to the value of y? Simple enough, it becomes one third in value. If this has become 3x, this will become y by 3. After all, the product has to stay the same. It has to stay xy. So now here, when y becomes one third, then the product stays the same. It becomes xy only. All right. Let's look at another example. Again, here we were given that x varies inversely with y, but quite often we'll not be given this specifically, right? Okay, uh, that will be evident from the other examples, the next two examples. The price of a diamond varies inversely with the square of the percentage of impurities. So here we are given how the price varies with the square of the percentage of impurities. We are given that price into square of impurities is a constant because price and square of impurities vary inversely. Now, the cost of a diamond with 0.03% impurities is 3600. What is the, so this is your instance one. When these are the impurities, then this is the cost. What is the cost with 0.05% impurities? All right, so we know that P1 I1 square, P1 I1 square is equal to P2 I2 square, right? So P1 is 3600 into I1 square, which is 0.03%. Now, here uh, I1 is 0.03% and I2 is 0.05%. So we can get rid of the percentages and we can get rid of the decimals because on both the sides of the equations, it will be the same, right? So can I just say that this is equal to 3 square is equal to P2 and 5 square? Do we understand this? Uh, if not, look at it this way. If I say 3600 into 0 0.03 square is equal to something, let's say x into 0 0.05 square. And uh, of course, this is percent. So this is upon 100 as well. If we were to take it like this, now 100 square and 100 square get cancelled over here, right? on the two sides of the equation and everything is multiplied. Also, let's say we remove the decimal. So we multiply this by 100. So we divide by another 100. That also gets cancelled on both the sides. So essentially, this thing upon this thing is nothing but 3 square by 5 square. That is what we need to worry about. right? So here, we get 3600 into 9 upon 25, that is equal to P2. All right. Now, this cal 20, we have 25 in the denominator, 3600. So, 3600 is nothing but 36 into 100 
So the hundred gets cancelled, and we are left with four over here. So four into nine is thirty-six, and thirty-six square is one two nine six. So we have P two is equal to one two nine six. This is the cost of the other diamond. All right. Let's look at the next example. The cost of rice increases by twenty percent. By what percent must the consumption of rice decrease to keep the overall amount spent on rice same? Now note that we are not given what varies inversely with what or what varies directly with what over here, right? We need to figure that out. All right. So overall amount spent on rice. So total amount spent. How do we calculate that? That is equal to. Cost of rice, cost of rice into the consumption. Does that make sense? Because let's say if the cost of rice is two dollars per pound, and if we consume ten pounds, then the overall amount spent will be twenty dollars, right? So total amount spent is equal to the product of cost of rice and the consumption of rice. Now we are given that the total amount spent on rice is the same. So basically, we are given that this is equal to k, which is equal to a constant. This means that cost inversely varies with consumption. Makes sense. All right. Now, if cost increases by twenty percent, which means Cost becomes six by five times of its initial value. How did we get this six by five times? This is discussed in the percentages module, so don't worry about it. You can check out that video, and it will give you all the details. Now, into the consumption, we need the product to stay the same, right? We discussed it over here as well that we need the product to stay the same. So then, if cost becomes six by five, what should happen to the consumption? It should become five by six. That is how the product of cost and consumption will stay the same, right? So basically, we are saying that the consumption should become five by six times of its initial value. This is a decrease of what? Of one by six, and in percentages terms, this is equal to sixteen point six seven percentage. Again, this is discussed in the percentages module, so don't worry if you're not comfortable with it. So keep in mind that direct variation implies that the ratio remains the same, and inverse variation implies that the product remains the same.